Blog Talk Radio. You are live at the Literary Lounge with your host, Destiny D, bringing you the newest and the brightest of the literary world right to your ear hole every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in, listen up. And learn something. This is the spot for new hot authors who are given the opportunity to shine each Saturday from one to two PM Eastern Standard Time. We will showcase a new author here at the Literary Lounge. We are taking out the time to give all of our literary friends an opportunity to showcase their work. The new author spotlight is a platform that allows us to ask up to 10 questions or more to give you, the audience, the most in-depth current information about each writer in their literary piece. We will have a new guest every week. Stay tuned. Hey, 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 it's your girl, Destiny D, live on WT. LR Radio, and yes, you are tuned in to the Literary Lounge, and we have a special guest for you today. Today's date is June 22nd, 2019, and we are on episode number 60. That's right. We've met with over 50 or more authors, and we're so happy to have this next young lady. She goes by the name of Miss Demetria Westbrook, and we're going to be talking about her new release called Terry's Life. So we want to give you an opportunity to get to know her, get to know her writing, and also see if she has anything planned in the near future. So with that being said, Miss Demetria, are you there? Yes, I am. All right. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I wanted to give you an opportunity to let the world know who you are. Um, So if you could give your introduction, you could do so now. Let us know where you're coming from. I'm coming from uh, Memphis, Tennessee, the (laughs) Mid-South. And uh, I've been writing for a while. Um, Started about 13 years old, um, writing really poetry, and now really started to develop into stories. It's... um, also, uh, about me, um, I'm a graduate from University of Nebraska, Omaha, and a mother of four daughters. All right, all right. So what what got you into writing this new book that you just put out? Um, What really got me into writing this new book that I put out, um, I've been wanting to write again. Um, I just got back started. Uh, I had to stop for a while because I've been so busy with just life in general. Um, my passion, like I said, was poetry in the beginning. But what led me to wanting to write stories was, um, well, I've been writing stories. I just wasn't able to pu- find nobody to publish them. So, And I just have a passion for um, imagination, creativity, uh, things amongst that nature. And so I really, really was ready to be like, let me go ahead and publish this work and see where, you know, how it would be. Okay, okay. So give us a brief synopsis of what this new book is all about. Tell us about Terry's life. 
Uh, Terry's life is about um, a woman that uh, that's a bisexual woman, and she has a lot going on in her life. Um, it was going just fine for her in the beginning until um, people started coming back into her life. And um, one thing from another, and her work, her job, and she finally got to a point where she was able to uh, be able to get things settled down and have a love life uh, after she resolved some issues with uh, some exes. Mm. When you say exes, it sounds like there was a few. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. It was was a couple. It was a couple. A couple exes that came back in her life. But it made it all for the better for her to um, be able to conquer some issues and um, be able to endure the relationship she is currently in to the point where um, they got engaged in the book. Okay, okay. So did you find writing this book rather difficult, or was it pretty much easy and it just came to you? At the beginning, it was difficult. Um, I spoke to a cousin of mine that wrote a book prior, and she said, figure out what you want your character to do. And I couldn't understand it. I tried to watch YouTube. But then, like, once I figured out, like, hmm, let's see if I can make this person come to life in my mind, then it it became easier, like, about the third, second or third chapter. And the life events just remind me of what some people go through in real life. So it really made it easier getting closer to the end. Oh, okay. Now, was there a particular part of the book that really stood out to you? And why? Part that really stood out to me, um, just out of the part um, that I wrote about the sisters, um, because it just that what stood out to me about that is how close I made them. Because in real life with my sister, we don't have like a real close bond relationship, so that stood out to me, especially with my daughters showing it towards each other that they have a real close, tight-knit bond, and it made me really able to write over that um, topic in general. Like, the bond is real tight, and they are real close. They talk about everything. They help each other out in the time of need. They got each other back. (laughs) And you said that your your real-life sisters are not the same. I could definitely... Oh, attest to that. I, I find myself <laughs> finding more sisters outside of my bloodline than the yeah. ones that was to me. I don't know why it's like that. Um, you know, that you could connect better with complete strangers than you can with your own family. And I and I mentioned the other day, you know, it's crazy how three people can be brought up by the same mother and father but be completely diff- different people. And, yes. and like I mean on complete total spectrums of each other. Like I have two sisters and I'm the one in the middle and I'm nothing like either one of my sisters. And I'm thankful for that. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely under second that I understand, definitely. I'm the older sister and my sister is the younger one and she just uh very different from me like you stated. Um it's just I, I'm more mellowed out, and she try to control everything. So I think that kind of give and give and take a battle with us being in a close knit relationship. Unlike my daughters, they pretty much know each other's spot, <laughs> and they respect it. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad that that you do have some some inkling of a way to. I guess associate with them like as far as for me, um, we don't speak. Like my older sister kinda like renounced herself from the family. <laughs> <She moved away. laughs> I'm 
saying, yeah, I mean, she she had the audacity to, like, call my grandmother up one day and was like, I'm not dealing with y'all no more. I, I don't wow. want to. I don't want to see y'all. Don't come to my house. Don't call me on the phone. Da 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 da. And he was like, okay. <laughs> he brushed it off. Wow. <laughs> and it you know, because eventually, what's going to end up happening is she's going to realize how wrong she was. Yeah. And then it'll be like a self recognizing thing. Like, we don't, I, I never push myself on anybody. You don't want to be around me. That's cool with me. I'm just as happy with my goldfish and my tuna toe frog and and yeah. I'll be fine. You know, but when, yeah. when you figure it out, I'll be here. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the way that I carry things. And um, I'm not sure as to why they feel the way they feel, but uh, my baby sister, she has one of those attitudes where you can't tell her nothing, and she'll cuss. She'll cuss out of. <laughs> I so than, understand that one. <laughs> I'll second I'm that like, one. Goodness, like I've never seen nobody that 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 nonchalant about everything and just talk to people any kind of way and don't don't care how she act, you know. But I'm glad that she had the two kids that she just had because yeah. they have humbled they have humbled her in a way that. She has become a mother, so she kind of likes to prove herself, and she takes care of her kids. So I applaud yeah. her for that. But as far as like politics is sitting down, buddy, buddy, no, we ain't. We 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 like apples and oranges. But, yes. Um, I think God. I definitely home. understand you on that one. I love my little sister to death, but she um. She's I, and I'm proud of her for being into her religion. It's just the fact when you come to poli- policing certain stuff, which recently stopped. Like whenever I put something on my Facebook post or Instagram, which I'm on both Facebook and Instagram, by the way, and also Twitter under D Westbrook yeah, Six. Okay. <laughs> yeah, make sure, make sure you drop all of those um, links. Let everybody know how they can contact you. Well, on uh, Facebook, you can contact me by Demetria Westbrook, um, and Instagram is D Westbrook Six, and also Twitter is D Westbrook Six. Okay. But going into that, yes, definitely. My sister uh, likes to try and police everything I do, and I'm like, understand. I'm still a Christian at the end of the day, and I do wholeheartedly believe in my religion, but um, I don't take Facebook serious unless it's promoting my book or positive things um, in that nature. But when I'm wanting to be on the other end of fun and joking, I don't, I would like that too, but I don't want to be police. But like I said, so far she has recently stopped. Um, I had to say something about it prior and yeah, it it stopped because I'm like I'm only human at the end of the day. <laughs> it's not that I don't believe in God. It's just the fact that I'm still, you know, we're growing in God. But also, when you're having fun and joking, you should be allowed to have fun and joke, not be strict twenty four seven, not have a fun or social life when it's you know come outside of church. <laughs> Right, right, right. I totally understand where you're coming from with that. Um, and I've noticed here lately that a lot a lot of people are beginning to shy away from the church because of the conviction that people have on telling people that they're wrong for what they're doing. Um, yes. You know, and it's and it's kinda it's kinda hard to accept it. But if you know it's the truth, then you know it's the truth. You just don't like it nose rubbed in it like a puppy. Um, right, but it's something that you have to do within yourself. Being preached at is not going to get it done. It has to be a change that comes from within. It has to be your your mind made up as to do what you feel is right. You know, it's it's not something that can be forced upon anybody because when you start doing stuff like that, you tend to push them further away and bring them in. So yeah. you know. As long as you know within your heart of hearts that it's something that you're working towards, you know you're not 100, but you're at least 80% and you're working on the other 20, they should be okay with that. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, they shouldn't be stunning you for trying. Because there's a lot of people out here that ain't trying. And, you know, I had I had yeah. found out that there are people who are deliberately worshiping Satan because they think that if they do bad enough, that they'll have a position instead of just burning in hell. I'm like, are y'all that dumb? Wow. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. Like, they, they know they can't be 100 as far as being a good person. So they feel like if they do enough evil, that they'll get a ranking of some kind. This is not a game of war. It, this is not a video game where you can right. get points for what you're doing. You, you're going to, to hell. Like, and it ain't no resort. <laughs> oh, <my goodness. laughs> but, right. That is crazy. This is the first time I'm hearing about that. That's sad, though. Yes, just they like, have state temples just like churches, like for, for for us. They got churches for the devil. And and, and they think that they're going to go somewhere else other than to a, a hellfire pit. And I just don't understand how they can rationalize that type of stuff. But they do. Right. But, um, but I, I want to be able to give you the opportunity because um, you have some callers that's actually on the, on the line with you. And I wanted okay. to see whether or not Somebody wanted to ask a question. So, callers, if you have a question, please press the number one key. That way you can ask your question. It will indicate to me that you have a question for the author that's on the panel, and we'll make you live so that you can ask a question. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with being on the radio, that's perfectly fine. We just want to acknowledge you and thank you for being on the show today um, because your support means a lot to us, okay? All right, now to get back into you, Oh, they have a question. Okay, hold on. Let me make them live. Give me one second. Okay. Okay, hello, caller. You are live. You can go ahead with introducing yourself and your question. Oh, peace and blessings. My name is Mr. Romeo DiNati. I want to say congratulations uh, on your book. Um, I'm a I'm a poet, and I always was interested in writing a book. I wanted to know... Did you have any ideas on continuing the book? Like, how many books did you feel like you had in you? And what advice would you give for first-time authors? Okay. Um, I do um, have uh, more books in me. Um, like I said before, I have a very vivid imagination and creativity um, to the point of, like, to me, I, sometimes finding different ideas on a daily basis, it distracts me, so I try to make it where I can control to get back to what I was um, at prior the day before. So I feel like I got um, several more books. Um, I don't have, I don't feel like I have a definite amount of stopping at, like two or three or four. I feel like I have more as I'm living, like, at least I want to make a goal of getting to, like, 20 or more books, but just a lot, over a lifetime period, just want to continue writing because that's my passion. As long as I'm able to do it and have time to do it because with my books, I feel it takes um, it takes deep thought for me. I don't feel that just writing anything is okay. And for um, newcomers, um, I feel like what I was told before is a great gesture as in when they say write what you know because, like, trying to write over something that you don't know nothing about could be a hard uh, hard thing to do or subject or information to come up with. So I wrote about um, with Terry's life, like I said, a woman – that was experiencing difficulties in her life until she finally grounded herself or the love of her life, resolved some issues with her past, which people go through on a daily basis. And and I was able to bring that forth to let people see, you know, what this person has been through and how it can um, relate to real-life situations. That's an awesome answer. And um, just to let the caller know, um, you don't necessarily have to write storybooks. 
you can do poetry books. I've, I've published a few myself where um, you're able to actually put your poems, if you have a good amount of them. Um, I, I did a poetry book that had 200 poems in it. Um, I've had other people who had 100 in theirs or 50. Um, if you have some that you've accumulated over time, you know, you could actually put those and format those into a book. So if you would like some more information about putting out a poetry book, feel free to contact me. Um, I'm on Facebook, author is Destiny Devine. Um, that's Destiny with two E's. Or you can email transparencylibrary at gmail.com, and I can give you more information on getting your book published as far as your poetry. Um, now back to Demetria. Um, is there anything that we should be looking forward to in the near future? Do you have any events or anything you're going to be at? Um, I don't have any events at the moment. I'm currently seeking something of that uh, here in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I know they have a lot of art festivals that goes on, so I'm looking to I'm looking into some things to see what I can uh, get into. Um, and also, uh, I do have a second book coming out here soon. Um, it's called My Sister Except Acceptance, and that book is a lot. That book is a lot about me. <laughs> Not everything okay. is uh, detailed directly towards me, but um, the situations that have occurred um, in real life is uh, more geared towards what I went through uh, coming out. But I just kind of switched the narrative. I don't. I wish I had an older sister in real life, but. <laughs> In the end, I have a younger sister. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, okay. So we'll definitely be looking out for that. So please um, be sure to keep us updated. We'll be looking out for you on the social media that you that you drop. That way we can keep um, in tabs as far as, like, what you got going on and what's new. Um, is there anything in particular that you would like to say as far as um, – you know, support or anybody that you want to give any credits to. Um, you could you could you could tell, you know, that now. Um, well most definitely, uh let's see. I, well I give all my credit to God mainly, but um I give my uh credit to my mom, even though at times growing up, um, I got to a point where even though she buy me notebooks for school, uh, she was she stopped um, because I would just write them all up with poetry and books and stuff like that, but um, she took a well, she took a liking to my poems. And after I started to come out loud with it, my family, so my family and my friends, um, I had them read over my book prior before letting it all out or publishing it and. They really encouraged me, and right after it published, I had people that come to me and tell me that they really enjoyed my book. So, um, and that uh, that in itself is enough support because I used to hold on to everything to myself and secretive about it and couldn't publish it, and, well, wouldn't publish it and didn't want nobody to see, but now I feel like I'm all out there, so... Um, with that being said, all my family and my friends, they're, like, supporting enough where I'm able to continue. And regardless if anyone like it or not, they'll get a lesson learned out of it. Well, that's definitely, definitely something that um, that I hope that they, the readers do get out of your, your book. I, I read it myself, and... I, I felt real drawn to, you know, some of the characters and some of the situations in the book, especially um, Terry's connection with her father, because um, I noticed that in that book there was a lot of, um, I guess, like, buried feelings that nobody ever, like, corrected. Um, yeah. And I think that that happens a lot of times with families who, have, like, the parent that separates from the other parent. So it's like they have this um, ill regard to the other person who left, um, and they normally don't get that uh, reconciling. They normally don't get the uh, opportunity to say, you know, 
I'm mad at you for this, but you you still my daddy, and we need to fix that. And, you yeah. know, so I'm I'm had that parameter in your book because it made the book more um more real and more relative to people who might be going through the same type of situations and stuff like that. So I really applaud you for what you're doing, and I enjoyed Thanks. your book. Um, I look forward to the next one because, um, as you know, I'm, I'm reading as I go along. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to give like a brief, um, a brief synopsis of the of the new book that's dropping soon, um, tell us a little bit about the new book again. Um, well, like I said, that um, is geared more towards uh, my life in general. Like I said, I made the switch to characters because I always wish I had an older sister, which I never got a chance to enjoy because I don't. I'm the oldest, as I said prior. Um, and b- before I did not want to let it out as this book is about me, but um, part of the things that's going on in this book, not every single thing, but part of what's going on in this book is about me. And it was more about um, just coming out in general, as in liking women, being a bisexual woman, um, the sister not accepting 100%. My sister did not accept me in the beginning of me coming out. And so it was a hard, um, say a hard, hard reality at first, but... Um, I really wanted my sister to accept me more because I wanted, well, she was a friend, you know, just like, a, you know, your sisters are always your friends in the beginning, majority of the time, majority families, but not every last family. So it was kind of hard to see or and go through that, well, she did not accept me, you know. She did not. Uh, there was uh, one situation in the book, that I can say that just really happened in real life. Um, that's one thing I'll give out, but not the rest of it. But, like, the whole church um, situation, um, I actually arrived to my sister's church, and I wanted to uh, go to an event that um, was for women. But with me dressing out as I was, as uh, more on the masculine side, my sister did not want me to attend the event. She met me outside, and we talked about it, and I left and eventually found a church home for me and my children, and I went from there. And so it it kind of broke my heart at first because I'm like, you're not accepting me, but, you know, you're my blood sister. And so I came to terms with it, and I started accepting me for who I was, but eventually she finally came around and started accepting me too. So um, this book is more as a coming out and a sister accepting the younger sister as in, you know, the event of coming out as in liking women. (laughs) Wow. So that's definitely something that we'll be looking out for. Um, It definitely it's close to home because I know I know a few females who um, were abused at early age, and um, a lot of them resorted to uh, liking women because of the sexual misconduct of the men that were in their lives that made them draw towards, you know, the same sex as opposed to drawing to a man and um, kind of burnt those bridges when it came to those type of relationships. So I'm actually yeah. glad that you spoke, you know, on that. And um, it's something that needs to be addressed. And I'm so sad on the last minute of the show, um, mm-hmm. I actually I actually wanted to go further deeper into what you got going on. So um, um, just, just to give you an opportunity, I guess we'll have to, like, come back with a part two, girl. Definitely. Um, so, <laughs> So let me set that up, and we'll come right back, okay? Okay. You are live at the Literary Lounge with your host, Destiny D, bringing you the newest and the brightest 
of the literary world right to your ear hole. Every Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in. Listen up and learn something.